Hey, shalom, my kum, shalom. Y'all push me on shine, brought the thumb. To the dear brothers out there, little amount of sisters. Hey, may the Heavenly Father continue to bless you, little amount of sisters. You know, you brothers out there worship Him in the spirit and the truth. And I pray the Lord continue to put the spirit on you to fight all the way to the end. You know, pray for me as well, man. You know what I mean? It's a, it's a, it's a thing about praying for each other. But before we start, though, man, um, let's give all praises to the Creator of the heavens and the earth. Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, Yahweh Yahweh, that's the name of the Heavenly Father. Yahweh Shai, that's the name of His beloved Son. All right, double honors to the apostles over there, great millstone. The elder bishops, up, the elder bishops over there, that's been holding down the word of the Heavenly Father and still doing what they got to do. All right, peace and mercy to you, brethren, once again. But uh, you see, they freed up the channel, so I'm back over here on GMS Inspiration Motivation. Um, if you didn't know, I was on. GMS Ancient of Days 04. That's my backup channel. And I also got GMS Inspiration and Motivation number two. But that page is um it ain't it is it's quite empty, you know, it ain't got as many subscribers and different things. So that's like my backup, backup channel. But nonetheless, hey, you know, we do what we do. It don't matter if we get strikes, we just move on to the next. And uh you diligent brothers out there that you know your spirits cling to you know whatever videos, brother, brothers' videos. You just follow them. That's it, man. It's the thing about uh, working out your own salvation, man, and showing forth diligence to make your calling in the election sure. But nonetheless, man, let's get into this lesson. Um, this is going to be like a continuation of what we was talking about at camp. All right? We was talking about the final test. So um, I forget what I titled it. I'm thinking about the, the hour of temptation or something, something of the sort. We was talking about that at the end of the camp, and... One of the things we were saying is that one of the things that that's constantly should that constantly is, should be on your mind at least, all right, or right, uh, or constantly is on the man of the Lord's mind is the final test that's going that's going to try him. You know, just like when you're in school, you go through a, um, a number of lessons throughout the semester, just to when you get at the end of the semester. You got to go through finals. Everything you learned, you're going to get put to the test on it. It's not going to be open book. It's not going to be um, notes. It's going to be, did you really learn this? You know? Did you really learn this? Did you really buckle down and put your trust in Yahweh Bashamel Shai? Because it's gonna get put to the test. You're gonna actually get put on the on the field or the court, so to speak. And you're gonna to have to remember, you're gonna to have to trust and remember the things that you've been learning now. That's one of the many tests that's constantly on your mind. Every day. Some days I'm just doing my thing and I think about damn it's gonna come that day. That day is approaching. That day is coming. Sometimes you get caught in that deep thought. That day. You thinking about, you know, you kinda of thinking like how it's gonna go. You don't know, you don't know how it's gonna go. And then another thing, you don't know if you're going to pass the test. You know what I mean? You have all these different thoughts. Or are you going to trust in the Lord? Because we know that it's going to be, it's going to be quite hard. It's going to be like, it's going to be trying. Abraham had to sacrifice, uh, he was told to sacrifice Isaac. That was intense. It's going to get intense. That's a good word. It's going to get intense. Yahweh Shai had to get on that cross. That was intense, you know? And all the other prophets that you read about, Daniel got through in the lion's den, that was intense. Or the three holy children got through in the fire, that was intense. So it's gonna come a day when it's gonna get intense on you. And are you gonna pass the final test or not? That's, that's where your mind got all the question marks at, you know? And then you may pray to the Lord, like, Lord, Bob was shy. Give me the strength. You know, I don't know what it is, but I just pray that whatever it is, I just stay strong. All right? So let's go real quick. Quick scripture. The first scripture the Lord had me run to was Revelation 3 and 15. It says, And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. And the he that had power is Esau Edom. Who gave him power? The Heavenly Father. All right? He had power to give life unto the image of the of the beast. Who is the image of the beast? Or what is the image of the beast? What is this new world order? 
all right? This new system, Esau Edom, which is a self-proclaimed white man and the elites of this society is trying to establish, that's that beast, okay? Under NATO, the EU, um, and the World Economic Forum, and, and all that um, area, and the image being the way that he wants to, for you to live under his society, under that new beast that the society he wants to bring. When we all know it will be governed by the worship of Satan. And it will consist of a lot of satanic practices. You know? What you can and can't do, what you can buy and what you can't buy. Where you can go and where you can't go. How long you can live and how long you can't live. You know? So the Heavenly Father is going to give this man power to, to get this thing rolling. That beast rolling. This new way rolling. That new world order rolling. It says that the image of the beast should both speak. And it's going to actually flourish for... It's going to come in... It's going to have a sense of... If it's speaking, that's the sense of it's living. It's actually going to... You know, he's, this devil is actually going to get... So to speak, get it off the ground. Because remember, there's a scripture in Job that says... Um, when he when he's about to fill his belly, belly. So it goes to show you that he is going to kind of get it off the ground, right? Or it's going to speak. It says, and cause it that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. That's the main point and why I brought it out because if you don't want to get down with this way that this Edomite is established on the earth, well, he just wants to kill you off. He wants to put you under capital punishment. So, us men of the Lord, we believe in the scriptures. We believe in the prophecies. We believe in the creator of the heavens and the earth, Yahweh, and Yahweh Shah. We're not going to conform to this devil if it's the Heavenly Father's will. We're not conforming to him. So, what is that? where does that put us on the, uh, the list? Where did that put us on? That we got to be killed off according to Esau's mind. And... You best believe the damn devil, he has all of us um, categorized. He even have organizations such as the Southern Poverty Law Center that have us, you know, uh, categorized, have us listed of who's, what, when, where, why, is all of that. Your addresses, where you live at, you know, how you're moving, they're tracking your phone, all of that. So he is going to come and try to. He is going to come and try to um, basically kill off the righteous, the ones that believe. He go, he gonna, he's going to do this to everybody. It ain't just us. It's just that we're the men of the Lord. So we're in a, like a special bracket of what he wants to do to us. You know? So that's always on your mind that one day, you know what I'm saying, this devil's going to be, he's going to be trying me. And... That, that everything I'm explaining is that final test on how the Lord's going to set it up for you to believe or uh, to show if you believe or not that intense moment for you when he saw us kicking in your door and telling you look you want to get down my way or I'm going to kill you you're going to put down that God or I'm going to kill you alright and this is why now we, 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 we locked in now. We locked in now so that when that intense moment come for you, that final test come for you, you can pass with flying colors. You just say, fuck it, close your eyes. I believe in the Lord. You know what I mean? This is out Revelation 3 and 10. It says, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation. So if we keep the, the, pay, the word of my patience, the word is the scriptures, the prophecies, the different commandments he told us to do. If you keep that in, pa in patience, suffering, waiting on the Lord, the Lord will keep you from the hour of temptation. So, well then how do you keep the word? That's what we're doing now. You're, you're reading the, the scriptures, you're praying to the Heavenly Father, and you're living by him. You're gaining the experience of, of believing in them. You can put in situations and now you can believe in them. That's how you that's how you build yourself up so you can keep 
the word of the Heavenly Fathers in your intense moment. You can keep the word. It's because you're practicing now. You're giving it your all now. But at the same time, we all understand that the only the elect is going to be chosen. This is the where it gets a little scarier too. Only the elect is going to pass. And none of us know if we're a part of the elect. So you could be doing a lot, but then if you're in a part of the elect, then somehow you're going to you're gonna slide off to the side, whether it be now or later. If you're not a part of the elect, you're going to eventually slide off. So it's, it's a thing of it's a thing of just fearing the Heavenly Father and trying your best. That's really what it is, because at the end of the day, the Lord did the choosing already. All right. So it said, if you keep if you keep the word, you stick to the word. It don't matter if you get challenged on it. Esau got a a, a, a big gun to your head talking about do this or that. You want if you stick to the word, the Lord will keep you. The Lord will have angels intervene. The Lord will have something happen real quick. The Lord will cause it. Just say I'm I'm throwing something. I thought of it random. Said for Esau, I think he gonna do that. The Lord cause an earthquake. And everybody's thought patterns, everything get thrown off. A piece of the house fall down on the guy, or a piece of something fly off and hit it, you know, whatever. The earth open up right where he's standing at, he falls in it. The Lord is gonna keep you from the hour of temptation. Or if it's not necessarily like a miracle of, a, of, a, of an escape, the Heavenly Father put a strong ass spirit on you, and you you basically give him the middle finger. And, and the Lord call you back up to him, but you died with all your integrity. And you didn't, you went out as a, you went out honorable, but the Lord gave you a spirit to stick to it. And you still won. You know, the Lord put your spirit back in your body. That's another miracle the Lord could do. Put your spirit right back in your body. You stand right back up. Now it's on. You spiritual power and you fully locked in with the Lord. 100% capacity but this is what this is kind of like when i said i'm thinking about the hour of temptation this is like when i'm you know you'll be thinking about these things of that final day all these little different things are running your mind it says i also will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth so everybody is going to have this test everybody it ain't just going to be us but see, only the elect is going to pass it. You know? And I would think right now, you need to be thinking about it now. You know, considering it now. Weighing it in the balance of your mind now. So you won't be, you won't be, you won't be caught slipping out there. You know? It's locked, guys. It's cutting the camera light on. It's a little, a little dim. But it takes now to think about it. So everybody's going to get put here. But see, we have the advantage of knowing who the Lord is and what to do. Jake that get put in that situation, or they're going to they're gonna sell out their mama. They're going to sell their kids out. You're going to see some of the people do some of the most weakest, weakest actions known to men. They're going to sell their baby out. They're going to say, look, just take my son. Do this or do that. Just do it. They're gonna they're gonna fold because they don't have the Lord. They didn't practice in the Lord now. You see, they didn't get to know Him now. So when that time that test come for them, they could have they could have passed, but they not doing what the Lord got us doing because it's coming. It's Wisdom of Solomon two and fourteen. It says He was made to reprove our thoughts. When you read this chapter, it's going into the minds of the Edomites, the elites of their society. The ones that believe in their mind, they're going to establish this new world order. It goes all in their mind. The Lord giving us an insight on how they think. And this is some of the words that they say. It says, he was made to reprove our thoughts. They understand very well that the prophets, the ones that the Lord put the spirit on, we were created to reprove this guy. Now the world knows very well that an Edomite is a self-proclaimed white man. 
but it came from the Heavenly Father putting the spirit on his prophets to, to speak it. The, the precept is 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter, where it says the Lord is going to reveal him with the spirit of his mouth. He saw God revealed that he's the devil and he's the Edomites by the prophets. So we were set up to reprove this guy. It says, this is more, what further on they go to say about us. It says, he is grievous unto us, even to behold. When they see his teaching, it gets under their skin. Because when they see us, that's a sure token that they're going to lose. Because the prophecy said that Esau is the end of the world. Esau's kingdom falls. And Jacob is the beginning of it that follows. Then we come up next. So after his kingdom, it's us to rule. So when you see us out there on them streets and we condemning him and telling him this and that, it's, it's grievous to him, to him. You know, he sock holes in the wall. All right, he throw the dinner food across the damn table. You know, he does all of that. And rightfully so, because you're gonna lose. It says, for his life is not like other men's. His ways are of another fashion. We ain't like the world. Yahweh Shai said that. Um, even though we're in the world, uh, let us be, let us not be, even though we're in the world, let us not, um, shit, I'm actually butchering it. Um, you know what? I'll think of another one because I can't think of that one uh, quite clearly. Um, oh, though we in the world keep us from the evil that's in the world in other words that's how he said it we're here we're living here but keep us from the 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 wickedness that's in here so we're we're in the we're we're of another fashion and that's the reason why we suffer because we we want to see things done differently we want to see things done righteously but we see the world being ran wickedly and we got to suffer it so we're of an, another fashion uh, And these Edomites They know that It says um, um, It says We are esteemed Of him as counterfeits So It says we are esteemed of him as, as counterfeits Yeah We explain the real men of the Lord We explain very well that you Edomites Are not the, are the, are not the Heavenly Father's people You're not 1948ers who are not the Heavenly Father's people. We're telling the world that. And the reason how we had we got all the way to the point where we call you 1948ers is because if we say the other terms that identify you, we get we get strikes on our page. We get a strike on our page. So we can't even identify you in, in other terms because it will get us a strike. So we gotta call you a 1948er. You know what I mean? And the 1948er goes back to the, that term goes back to the Balfour Declaration. And that's all you that's the clues that you need. Look up the Balfour Declaration and how that got these people, these 1948er people, believing that they're the people of the Heavenly Father. They're the they're the children of Israel. So your counterfeits it says he abstained from our ways as from filthiness he, he, he and we ain't we ain't into your wickedness we don't we abstain from how you move all right we're not at your lgbt your black lives matter we're not at your bt awards we ain't at none of that stuff you got established it's like we have running we're, we're running from filthiness from you it says he pronounced the end of the just to be blessed. We're, we're saying, you brother and you sisters out there, you stick to Yahweh Shem El Shai, your end will be blessed. That's what we're pronouncing. We're pronouncing only when you listen to us teach, we're, we're preaching the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's the blessedness at the end of us. It says, and make of his boast that the heavenly father, that the, the God is his father. We're making a boast that we are the people of Yahweh Hashem El Shai, the Negro, Latino, and Native American, and that Yahweh and Yahweh Shai is our God. We're boasting in that. 
You know, we call on the name of the Lord. Esau sees that. So he knows that we boasting in, in, in that we know we boasting that we know the Heavenly Father and the Son and that He's our God. He Esau knows that. And Esau also knows that um we we're calling him counterfeits. We're coming against him, we're proving him. So going all the way back to the basis of this lesson, this guy is mad. That's another reason why he's going to come how he's going to come after us. We got an angry, angry, seven head uh, beast on the loose, man. Seven head fucking tin horn uh, upgraded monster that wants to defeat us. And that's the reason why we locked on Yahweh Bashmael Shah because the Heavenly Father's son, the scriptures say that, that the statue that was hit by that stone broke it without hand. Yahweh Shah is going to be the one that's going to break down your kingdom. He's been given the power. You know, us as men are alone, we can't fight you. You're, 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 you're ripping us to shreds and nobody wouldn't, and then, and then bury it and nobody wouldn't give a freak about what happened to us. But if we come in that proper way under Yahweh Shemel Shai, you will be defeated. It don't matter how big and monstrous you look and how big and puffed up you are. Yahweh Shai is going to come through and destroy you. I always explain in a lot of my lessons that you had these kingdoms that came and went from the Babylonians, the Persians and the Medes, the Greeks and the Romans. They all were took down by other men. These kingdoms were took down by another kingdom. Babylonians was took down by the Persians of the Medes. The Persians of the Medes was took down by the Greeks, etc. But this Edomite is prophesied to get took down by Yahweh Shai. Alright? Angelic force. Yahweh Shai not meeting him as a man. So we we are gonna win. We just gotta stick to the right side. You gotta stay on the right team. Alright? Even when you get test, you gotta stay, you gotta. All of us, we gotta stick to what 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 it has been told, what's been written. It says, "Let us see if his words be true." This Edomites want to see if what we're saying holds holds weight. It says, "And let us prove what shall happen in the end of him." <clears throat> it says, "For the just man," I says, "For if the just man be the son of the heavenly Father, he will help him." And deliver him from the hand of his enemies. So Esau knows that look, if the Heavenly Father is really for you, he's gonna deliver you. But he wants to put it to the test. That goes all the way back to us reading Revelations 13 and 15. If you don't want to worship his his image of his beast, then he's gonna try to kill you. That goes all the way to this. He wants to prove to see if our words be true, if the Heavenly Father is with us. And that's going to be the hour of temptation because if you don't want to get down with his way, if you don't want to get down with the C-H-I to the P, then he's going to try to kill you, man. That's the hour of temptation. All right? And this is this devil wanting to see if the men of the Lord is really about that life. That's in other words, you want to see if you're really about that life. You know? And he knows if the Lord's really with you, that he's gonna save you from him. That's that, that. That's why this guy is a sick. He's sick. He's sick. He's a mad scientist, sick man. Because why would you want to test that theory? Don't you understand? If the Lord is for this man, that you're gonna have to suffer the consequences. You're gonna have to get jacked up. But see, you saw Edom. He like fuck it. He gonna take that. He gonna take that um receipt, so to speak. He gonna take that blow. He really, he's ready to take that blow. This guy's gonna take that blow. And you think like, this dude is sick. He's out of his mind. Yes, Esau Edom is out of his mind. You know? It says, let us examine him with despitefulness and torture. So that's how he wants to do it. He, want, he gonna try to come down with all the tools in his box to try to break you. Despite, despitefulness. Meaning he's going to despise you. 
He's gonna he, you however it may happen. It's just gonna be in the sense of despising. All right? It said despitefulness and torture. He may have things set up for you to try to to try to torture you. It says that we may know his meekness and prove his patience. They wanna know it. They want to know. They want to see. That's how they say it to themselves. They want to see. So these things constantly, as being a man of the Lord now, these are things we be thinking on. Like, damn, one day, this damn devil going to be maybe at my door testing me, man. You think there's something? I just pray the Lord to pass the test because I don't know if I'm going to pass the test. I don't fuck. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what I'm going to be doing an hour from now. You know? I don't know what the Lord got planned. But I just pray to the Lord, Malcolm Shah, that he had mercy on me, man. That I'm found worthy. The things I'm doing now has pleased him to where he is, he'll do divine intervention as I've seen a brother put on the board. It says, let us condemn him with a shameful death. And by his own sins, he shall be respected. So this guy, you've seen it. He, wanna, he wants to try to shame us to our death. Make us believe that what we believed in, the Heavenly Father and the Son, was of vanity. It was of no avail. That's what he wants. He wants us to, to think that. I just thought about the movie um, with, with Samuel Jackson and Bruce Willis, um, Glass. The movie Glass popped in my head as I said that when they were trying to break them, they were trying to tell them that they wasn't special. They were trying to manipulate them. They were trying to manipulate uh, the character of, of Bruce Willis and the character of Samuel Jackson in the movie Glass. You know? Despitefully, man, that, you know? Should make you feel shamed about believing in the Lord. It says, for by his own sins, he shall be respected. So you wanna be respected by you sticking to the, the word of the heavenly father. Esau knows that. He just said it in his mind. This is how they're gonna come at us. So this is just knowing how they're gonna come gives you advantage now to believe in the Lord that much more. All of us, brethren. All right. It says, such thing, I was thinking of a verse, but man, what was I thinking about, man? Oh yeah, that's what I was thinking about. Let me go to that real quick. I'm thinking about I'm thinking about a verse real fast. Let me go to it real quick. Because yes, he come with what he's gonna try to come with the sense of trying to torture us, man. You think about torture, of course, nobody wants to get tortured, none of that shit. That shit sounds crazy as hell. But the Heavenly Father um is gonna have these different type of tests out there to prove you. Your intense moment. Like when Abraham had to, uh, he thought he had to offer up Isaac. Yahweh Shai had to get on that cross. The three holy children had to go in the fire. You know? Uh, Esther and them thought that all, all Jake was finna get killed off by the decree of Haman. Onias the third thought that Heliodorus was gonna come and rob the treasury and leave Israel broke. They all, every, Jake be having intense moments in the scriptures, our forefathers, but they all linked on the Lord and you see the outcome of each of these men. From Abraham, when he was finna offer up Isaac, the Lord intervened and, and, and uh, blessed him mightily after that. Called him his friend. Yahweh Shai got everything subjected onto him. He's coming back to get it. The three holy children didn't get burned or nothing. And they got status higher in their life. Daniels didn't get eaten by the lions. But the people who got Daniel and tried to get Daniel in trouble, they got put in the lion's den. Onias the third, with Heliodorus trying to rob the temple, an angel popped up and, and, and knocked that, knocked him out. Knocked him out. Not beat him up, knocked him out. He got knocked out like um like you <laughs> like do you see him boxing? <laughs> I know Jake gonna get a little upset, but hey, like Tyson Fury knocked out uh, uh, Deontay Wilder. You seen that? 
Deontay Wilder was through. Well, the angel came and knocked out Helio Doris. He was knocked out and said darkness can pass him. He was asleep. So these different, our different forefathers got put in these intense moments, but they trusted in the Lord and the Lord came through and intervened. It's no different from how we should be thinking now concerning this, this, this final test that's gonna come on us. Revelation 20 and four says, and I saw thrones and they that sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh Shai in the word of the heavenly father in which had not in which had not worshiped the beast neither his image nor ever received the mark upon their foreheads in their hands or and they lived and reigned with Yahweh Shai a thousand years so it ties all the way in some of us brethren going are, are going to get beheaded because we not going to give in to Esau Edom in our, in our intense moment of, of our temptation that's going to try us, our final test. But Esau said he's going he gonna to prove us with despitefulness and torture. To get your head chopped off, that's a torture. So these scriptures connect with each other. But they tell, the, they tell you the story of the code of what you need to do in order to, to pass. How to think. When you go in these situ when, you, when we go into these moments, these intense moments, and it said we're gonna get beheaded because we didn't bow the knee. So when you think about that hour, man, you understand very well too that um, there is there is gonna be a victory. There is gonna be a victory. It ain't like Esau just gonna have his way. So jumping back to Wisdom of Solomon two and twenty one, it says such things they did imagine. These Edomites are imagining this against us. It says, and were deceived. They were deceived in this vain ass thoughts. It says, for their own wickedness have blinded them. These devils own, in their own pride and, and wickedness, they blinded by it. It says, as for the mysteries of the heavenly father, they knew them not, neither hoped they for the wages of righteousness. They didn't hope for the wages of righteousness. Meaning that righteousness has a reward. Wages is the reward you get, right? They didn't hope that we will get a reward for the righteousness that the Lord is allowing us to put in now, all the way up to that intense moment. For you giving up your life, you're gonna be saved. You know? Uh, the scriptures talk about, um, I'll grab it real fast, real fast. The scriptures say this in Wisdom uh, Sirach or Ecclesiasticus, chapter 1, verse 13. It says, Whoso feareth the Lord, it should go well with him at the last. That's the wages of righteousness. He that feareth the Lord, it should go well with him at the last, and he shall find favor in the day of his death. That's the wages of righteousness. Esau's not looking forward to us receiving a reward for for believing in the Lord and doing his commandments. Esau is not banking on that we're gonna, something's gonna happen for us. Esau is banking on that he's gonna destroy us and continue on what he, what he wants to do. So it says, um, as for the mysteries of the heavenly father, they knew them not, neither hoped they for the wages of righteousness, nor discerned a reward for a blameless soul. And we read in Sirach, 1 and 13 that we're gonna have favor in the day of our death it may be an angel pop up and save you it may be the lord give you spiritual power it may be the lord make some natural disaster happen so you can escape the lord um or the lord strengthen you with a hell of a spirit to go on to your death you're going out condemning them whatever it may be you're gonna have favor in that day over esau edom so this is this is the you know an encouragement for us brethren you know like i said you think about this test all the time you know what i mean you know it's getting we're getting to that moment we're getting up there but this is what we fight for this is the condition of the battle this is why we this is why you continuing on all right the scriptures talk about who should stand up against edom you know who should i send against the evil doer you know and, and, and us brethren we find our feet in this in this lot 
Forget this Eden Mike, man. Look what he did to us, yo. Look what he did to us. It's far more worse than what he think he could do to us now. You feeling like you could do whatever you want to do to us. You didn't already did it. You didn't already stole our identity and, 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 and uh, made us lose our heritage. You didn't did enough already. You trying to kill us off or do something more. It just, it, it, it's already a fucking enough. You know what I mean? Shit. Having to, having to stand up against your ass one more time and shit. Fuck it, man. You know, I'll be praying the Lord just, you know, keep the spirit on us, man. This dude ain't already did enough to us. To be to, like, fuck. When is it gonna be enough for you, Jake, to start standing up? Believing in the Lord again. And saying, forget this dude. And putting your life on the line if you have to. For the for the greater's good. I know you heard that saying, for the greater's good. For Yahweh, for the for for the Israelites. Uh, the people of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Hashem Shai, is good. For the Lord. For the greater good. Fuck it, man. You know, you start telling yourself that when you're thinking about this. You know? This Psalms 25 and 14, it says, The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. And he will show them his covenant. My eyes are ever towards the Lord. For he shall pluck my feet out of the net. The net is the trap. He's going to pluck us out of your trap. It says, turn thee unto me and have mercy upon me, for I am desolate and afflicted. The troubles of my heart are enlarged. Oh, bring down me out of my distresses. Look upon my affliction and my pain and forget and forgive all my sins. This is what we're at in our mind to be able to stand and fight says consider my enemies for they are many and they hate me with a cruel hatred oh keep my soul and deliver me let me not be ashamed for i put my trust in thee let integrity and uprightness preserve me for i wait on thee redeem israel oh yahweh by shimel shai out of all his troubles and that's how we moving as king david wrote that down man let our integrity and uprightness preserve us. The things we're doing now to show the Lord we love him. You know, we, we want to do what's right forevermore. Let our integrity and uprightness of doing this now preserve us. And the Lord is going to do that. And he is going to shut this Edomite down. But at the same time, he's going to put that final test on us. And the servant's not greater than the master. Yahweh yeah, Shai went through it. We're going to have to go through it. So I just wanted to speak a little bit on that, man. Uh, we was talking about this last Saturday on, on the camp. The brother Mawatha Zak was leading the camp. And we was talking about this. And it's just something serious as hell that we all going to have to face one day. And right now, you do the thinking and the meditating on it now. You're building yourself up mentally now. And you're praying to the Lord to give you that favor. Because you could do all the meditating all that you want. If you ain't in the graces of the Lord, you're going to break. But I hope that was edifying to you, brothers and your sisters out there. Stay strong. Keep doing what you do. Keep fighting. Keep building yourself up. And I believe strongly that you will make it in that day if you stick to what you're doing now all the way up to that day. The Lord going to gonna grant you the spirit that you need, man. Okay? So, yeah, man, I pretty much tagged everything. I'm going to say Shammai, Yasha Allah, Yahweh Allah, Yahweh Yahweh Akud, which is the Paleo-Hebrew. Of the Shammai prayer, uh, the English equivalent is Hero Israel. The Lord our power is one, and best believe you, you Israelites out there, man, are He's living and breathing right now. He's gonna come back and save us and deliver us, and everything gonna be all gravy. Hey, but with that, hey, Yabashmah Shai, Brakatami, brother Shalom, stay up, Shalom.